So, Morrow, how do you like your tea, mate? No sugar, a little bit of milk. Do you do the no sugar thing because you're like, you're like a big boy sportsman and you're just trying to be like mad healthy all the time, or is that like a conscious decision from somewhere else? Nah, so it's, it's basically about health. Like when I was when I was younger, you used to fill it with sugar. Yeah. Uh, so now I just take it, take it easy. But normally you get a biscuit as well, but because you are on this very, very healthy thing, I got your orange, bro. You know, this, these are actually my one of my vices. Is it? I could eat comfortably. What kind of vice is that? <laughs> <laughs> so today's theme, what I'd like to talk about with you, because you're in a very hyper-masculine sport, do you get what I mean? You're one of the best doing it. And I wanted to just talk to you about, like, smashing down stereotypes. When I think of like rugby, I think of someone who's like slightly like middle class or from like a slightly good good kind of background that just didn't want to play football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when people think of rugby, they think of like upper class, they think predominantly white. Mm -hmm. um, like being the person I am, being black, being Nigerian. Um, what? <laughs> have to salute you for that go on, bro, Amen. sorry. Um, just by your very existence, I think you're you're helping to change the narrative, change change how people perceive rugby. Mm -hmm. For my case, I started off at a boarding school which was one of the top top public schools in the country. Mm -hmm. So these guys they would wear top hats, mm -hmm. we had canes, we had Tail coats, we had the, the full shabam. Looking mad. It actually looked kind of fresh. It actually, <laughs> kind of, it actually, it actually looked like. Um, Don't wear that around me, bro. <laughs> it actually looked like old school Snoop Dogg, like pimp video. Like. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> the head teacher didn't see it like that, but yeah. yeah. Um, so my parents, they thought like rugby was just a hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just thought that it was something that I did just to have fun, which it was at the start. Yeah, yeah. So I remember when I was like, 17 or so and I was like oh dad uh, I think I want to go part-time uh, 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 there's this <laughs> like he's like what <laughs> You're like do what record stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah no yeah, bro yeah, I, I, I totally run. feel you because I feel like I had a similar struggles to you with my parents it just seems like you were more like lucky in the sense that rugby and academia kind of go hand, hand in hand, hand. Yeah. Do, yeah but with me Music was like, uh, it's like something that's going to lead you to opposites. drugs. Yeah, and that's yeah, what my yeah. parents were thinking. It's yeah. just, it's going to lead you to drugs and it's going to lead you to jail. And it wasn't until like I got a record deal and like my music starting to go on like uh, platforms that they recognise, you know, like BBC Radio One or like, yeah. you know, Nigerian parents. When their friends start hearing about oh, it. Oh, I saw your son. Uh, yeah, son. you know, bro. CNN. That's when you <laughs> CNN, bro. And when the, when their friend says it, that is when it's Makes the best it real, thing. Yeah. It's the most important thing to them. They they love it. It's mad. <laughs> Going back to stereotypes and breaking down stereotypes. Did you find that as someone who was of a Niger Nigerian heritage? that you felt any pressure to be like a certain type of way or I, did you experience I, I, anything I, like I, that? I found like one of the biggest stereotypes was that like I was just I was just a rugby guy. Mm. So I didn't really have anything else to my bro. It goes back to like the stereotypes of how people see athletes. People don't necessarily regard them as the smartest individuals mm -hmm. or you know financially responsible. I think me studying had a big part to play in the way that people perceive me yeah and a lot of the reaction when people find out that um that i have a degree or i've studied they're like oh oh really <laughs> oh really that, wow oh, yeah, wow yeah, yeah, yeah. that must be so tough yeah, like, yeah. Well <laughs> good on you pat yourself on the back <laughs> jolly good <laughs> obviously now you're like one of the biggest like rugby players in the country what does someone like you do when they're not on the pitch or when they're not training i do a lot of things <laughs> just just I the do... things you can say on here bro. Just, <laughs> you know them ones man we don't want to like know all of it just... yeah so i read i, I read, read mm -hmm. a little bit i've dabbled in poetry Previously, Sick. I went through a period of a couple of months where I was actually like properly into it. Mm. I probably still have the, the poems somewhere. Was it for, was it for a chick? 
Because <laughs> it's calm if it was, bro. But if it was, then I'd just say, don't do it. Do you get what I mean? Because that might be uncomfortable for you. But nah, 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 it wasn't. Nah, nah, it was nah, just because you want to say, okay, yeah, cool. It was actually, it was actually about, about rugby, about sport. Oh, sick. Um, do you remember it? The, I think the last two lines were, there comes a time when the time must be taken. And it's... Beautiful. It, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, come on, guys, come on. So, hip hop, grime, rap, though, as you said, they're all like proper confrontational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like heated energy in there. There is, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's been your process of like keeping away from that? Um, I feel like for me, um, when I first started out, you know, obviously you've got this whole grime thing. It's very kind of like hyper-masculine. All the lyrics are about like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm getting this, I'm getting that. Bruv, I just didn't really feel, I wasn't that person that was like on the road, like selling like anything, or like I wasn't, you know, committing like mad crap. Like I'd still some, some sweets from the shop or something like that, or like a magazine or something like that. But I was more kind of like, how can I just be myself in this environment yeah. where like everybody else is this like hyper, hyper, like masculine. I kind of feel in your environment, in your like music industry, it's more so of the stereotypes that was more internal. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's more like how these group of artists perceive these group of artists. Yeah, right? yeah. Whereas I think in rugby it's more external in terms of how society views views a rugby player. I think you're right, but I think in saying that, like, internally, there was all of this, like, kind of, I would say it was like this imaginary, like, bad boy criteria. Yeah. If you're ticking all the boxes, then you're in jail, to be fair. But <laughs> if, you're, if you're ticking, like, 90% of the boxes, then it's like, you fit our perfect criteria. But then, externally, there's this whole uh, perception of, like, yeah, these guys, they're, like, delinquents. Yeah. They're not really going anywhere in life, yeah? So you're kind of, like, the outsider. I think that's why I was so hell-bent on kind of breaking down all the negative stereotypes that had come from our community. Yeah. A lot of my lyrics kind of like reflected getting out of your situation, being the best yeah. version you could be. And then if it wasn't about that, it was just ultra positive and yeah. ultra happy, do you get what I mean? I think I was almost taken aback by how people would be like, oh, like you're, you're eloquent or like you're... The your, little subtle things. Is yeah, the little subtle, subtle things. things or like, oh, oh my you goodness, speak well. Like, you speak well. <laughs> well you know? And like, for me, I don't know, like, I just didn't ever want to do anything that was going to make me look ugly. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, or yeah, make me yeah. look like tarnished or make me look like... And that was the mentality at the time. But now we're in a new time and I don't really feel like that anymore. <laughs> All right, so on every episode of Spilling the Tea, yeah, I like to do something mad random. And today I want to do face masks, bro. Face masks. I know we've been talking about stereotypes and like masculinity and all that. So I was going to put you on the spot, rude boy. All right, no yeah. problem. You have two choices, right? You have Moisture Bomb, right? Which is super hydrating and rebalancing. And then the other one is for anti-age. No, I'm young, bro. Yeah. You might need that. You might, I, need, I might that need that one. Yeah. I will say no more. <laughs> have you done one of these before? And be honest, this bro. Is, I swear, this is the first time I've ever done this. So it could it's be it's a bit wet. It's my first time as well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to look like M. Honcho. <laughs> Yours is looking like some Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. <laughs> while we're here, while we're just doing this for a little while, I just wanted to ask you about haters, bro, and how you, you know, how you deal with, like, I don't know, if you have a bad game or something. How do you zone out of all of that? My, so my process is, like, you have to take the rough with the smooth, you know? There's, there's sometimes when you're going to be high, playing well, and sometimes when you're not going to be up to your normal standards. Mm -hmm. When you say going to be high, you don't mean... Not not your type of high. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> what what I find is that often, like if you're doing anything of note, you're gonna get you're gonna get haters, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So it's like it's more of a reflection of them rather than you. Yeah. Oh shit! One of the cucumbers is gone. Yeah. <laughs> How's it feeling, bro? Yeah, it's feeling um a little bit wet. <laughs> How about fresh? Is this something that you do, that you would um, incorporate in your skincare routine from now on? Yeah, maybe not every day. Yeah, but, um, but uh, maybe if there's 15 minutes that we should leave it on. Is yeah. it? I think it that was about enough. 15. Yeah. So, Mauro, cheers, bro. This has been a cheers. vibe. We have Thank to do this bro. again. No worries. 
I never asked you, bro, like, which one is you in the picture? Because obviously tell. that's Mumsy. I'm going to say that's you. That's me, yeah. That's you, so who's yeah, that, that's brother? That's my older brother, Jeremy. All right, big up yeah. Jeremy, man. <laughs> <laughs>